Morning, so what we're doing is we're going to massively improve the look of the front of this vehicle and we're also going to improve the nighttime driving, the safety uh, and a number of other options like blinding absolute jebs with high beam. So I'm currently getting the suntan off my van. So what we're doing, we're going to fit some mounts to the top of the bonnet and some spotlights up there and we're also going to make a mount for the actual grille itself and mount some bigger spotlights there. Stand by and you'll see how this is done. Right, so first job is we're going to get the grill off and we're going to see what we've got to work with. We've seen a few of the online products and they're absolutely bang on. Um, however, when I've got a bang on fabricator just around the corner, it's absolutely mad not just to make your own. So, let's get this grill off and see what we're working with. Plastic cap there, plastic cap there. Right, so to me, we've got a fit in here, fit in here. We've got a couple of bolts down the bottom. Uh, we've also got, see this and this. So I suppose this and this is going to be the main ones, isn't it? As it comes across just as a bar. And then so what we're doing now we're just looking for some nice sturdy pickup points um, so so far we're looking at the bump amount here the bump amount here um, and either one of the top mounts here or straight up to the slam panel what I would really like to do is get a winch on the front of this however that's going to be down the road after we've campered it out uh, I've had a look at a few of them on the market um, I don't really want a full bumper because the people that do it it looks like the jaw off of American Dad do you know what I mean uh, and it's personal preference I think this is a good looking van anyway so I kind of want to retain I kind of want to retain the looks of it so I do like the winch trays that come across the middle and then they're like a skid guard that goes underneath so I'm going to keep my eye for something like that first over a full blown bumper or, or what I might have a look at is there is, I have seen on the market now, I think it's Germany or Holland or somewhere like that, they're actually doing it where it's a tubular bar that goes over the top of your existing bumper and everything's mounted to that. So a little known fact, uh, this is only around a five to seven minute job, but that only happens in this workshop with Rob for one simple reason. Those that have watched the channel long enough will know it. Why are you laughing, Rob? Because uh, they don't see the outtakes. Rob, well, they also don't say that you're one of the few people that has a UK registered time machine. I do indeed have a time machine, that's very true. That's how we make his videos look like they're only seven minutes long. Rumour has it that now that we're not in the EU that he might actually have to remove his time machine. Right, I can't emphasise this enough. When you put the top mounts on up here, the bonnet's going to want to slide down the brackets before you undo anything. Get a marker pen and either put some little dots all over the place on both pieces or draw around it so that way as you undo the uh, nuts, the bonnet's going to want to slide. You put the brackets on, nip it back up, when you slam the bonnet down, you're going to mess your wing and your bonnet up. If you've already put the marks on, you can see exactly where the bonnet was lined up before you do this. So that way, when you put the bonnet back down, it's as it was before you touched it. So I don't know if you can see here, I've got a little marker pen line there, so you can see how far forward and backwards it is. And I've also, just for safety, put three lines there, three lines on the other side. So long as all these lines match up, when it's tightened up, I know we're going So at the minute, we're just roughing this on, um, but as you can see, it's solid. 
it's one of them things where ideally we'd have gone to some like kind of structural mount and like i say eventually i'll have a winch tray on here and it'll go to that but for now this is actually quite a sturdy thing so he's just doing 100 mil down and then all the way out and then what we can do we can measure up where the brackets are going to go and how much of the grill we're going to have to trim out So there we go, that's all four mounts on now. So now we can look at getting the spotlights on, we can get the wiring in place and we can get the switch panel sorted. Right, so on this control unit, there's a few nice little features on it. Yes, it's made in China. However, this is the higher quality stuff. So this is like on par with your smartphones, your power banks, your things like that. It's not your cheap, tacky, breaking stuff, if that makes sense. So in this box, uh, we have the actual control bit that you see. We've got the bracketry to fit that. And we've also got the main fuse board. And the reason why I like this kit so much is you can put the main fuse board out of the way. I'm going under a seat. And then you can have a little, one little wire going up and then you've got your control unit. So it's nice, it's tidy. You've not got a load of wires going behind your dash or anything like that causing fire issues, anything along them lines. It's just a nice bit of kit. As well as that, you've got protection with this by having a fuse breaker, which is very, very handy if you go in off the grid, something like that, because if you did have a short, an issue, something like that, and it blows a fuse, better than the vehicle catching fire but then you've got no fuse it's then out of action whereas with a breaker you can address the issue of why it's shorted why it overheated anything along them lines and you can put the breaker back on again so it's reusable and it's kind of not having to go back to a workshop something like that if you're remote you're out the way um, or you just can't get the parts and so in this unit as you can see this is the bit that's going to go under the seats this is the breaker, um, this is the safety device, so you can test it by pressing it and you can redo it. That's uh, 60 amps, so you've got a fair bit of tolerance on that. You've got the nice little controller here, a bit of bracketry and stuff, and then you've got some apps there. Okay, so this is to um, whether you've got Android or iOS. And then just the usual bump that comes with it, you know, put whatever you want to put down on these. And the destructions, again. and again, once, once again, you can scan there for the app. There's a few options for this. So in the Land Rover, I've got the slightly older version that doesn't have the app. Um, that's great if you're conscious on the money aspect of things because it's a lot cheaper. Um, it doesn't have the um, smartphone app, so you can't control the lights off of your phone. However, if you just want them to turn on and off to the switch, beautiful. They do a six and an eight button. This one, you can change the colour of the display, you can do all kinds of wuzzy features as you'd expect, um, but obviously you're going to pay a premium for that. I've been running these for years now and they haven't let me down to the point where there's one in the back of the Land Rover controlling all the camper gear, there's one in the front controlling the lights, and I've also got one of these in the DAF as well, so that kind of says you know where I'm at with these. One key feature as well that I think I'll mention on this one is you can actually program the switch for not only do you press it for on and then press it again for off, you can actually do this as a momentary, so for something like a horn or something where you don't want it to be on all the time, it's just momentary. You can also set it up, I'll double check on this one, but I think you can set it for strobe. So if you're putting, say, I don't know, recovery lights or something like that, um, or you've got a better light bar or something that you would want to throw, you can set that up. So yeah, let's have a little look. Yeah, we've got the power in. Ideally, you want to put the breaker at the other end, which then fuses the incoming cable. However, it's an ordeal to get to the breaker if it's under the floor. Under the seat, it's always accessible, it's always fine. What I'm going to do, because as you can see, 
this is a twin seat i'm putting a single seat in so all of this is coming out in a few weeks so what i'm going to do i'm not bolting this down just yet i'm not bolting this down just yet because this is going to have to come off and this wiring down here and the single base is going to go in when that's in this is going to be then bolted down it's going to be a permanent feature but for the process of this video this is how it's going um, but once it comes out we're going to put a little bit of the uh, sleeving round here round here and round here and just under so once you've got the power from the battery to the actual fuse board itself then it's time to get the signal cable and the uh, switch cable on okay so the signal cable is going to go to wherever you want it um, it could be on the side of a cupboard if it's going in the rear of your vehicle um, i'm going to be greedy and i'm going to have two of these units on this vehicle just because they're so neat they're so tidy and they just work well um, basically what we're going to do now is it's going to be up into the cab i'll show you what we've done was run the cable down to here and obviously we've put a hole in there and that's going to go on there you do have a couple of options on this okay so you've got this one here which this screws onto the unit and then you can put a screw either side or you can have a mount that then angles it in whichever direction that you want So you'd think an eight switch panel would be like totally excessive for uh, like the cab of a vehicle. However, it soon fills up fast and I've got a load of other ideas of stuff that I could actually run off this. So already we've got the windshield lights, which is the little cubes that are going at the bottom of the windscreen. We've got the grill, that's going to be the main spotlights. We haven't got it yet, but that's going to be the roof light bars. We've then got the rear light bars because I'm going to have one on the back for when I'm reversing up in places where there's not much light. We've got a right and a left. These are going to be scene lights. So wherever I'm camping, I've got the option of having a little bit of extra light there setting up. You wouldn't leave these on as a camping light. However, for setup, it's fantastic. Um, auxiliary. At no point is there ever enough sockets that are factory fitted. So it's always good if you've got the option of having a little bit more power there. So I can have, say, like CB radios, more charge points for cameras and things, um, GPSs and whatnot, um, up to, you know, a fair old ampage. I think it was about 30 amps. So, yeah, that's them all done, bar one. And I'm not that far on in the build yet. I may have that just as... Um, an interior light because i quite liked in the the land rover having red kind of uh running lights inside um just see so you, as you're looking around at night you know everything's nice and bright out in front of you but as stuff falls over or you you, you want to have a look around you can still see in the cab as you're moving and it's not overly bright to dazzle you and so the next step is we've got some gorgeous gorgeous lights and because the dutch spec is now the latest thing we're going to get some amber lights so as you can see on here, you can have these in white or in the uh, the amber and they've got a lovely little diffuser on so you get a nice wide spread with that one and a nice long one with that one. So let's get these fitted. So anyone wondering with the light mounts, they are bespoke to the vehicle. Um, have a word with Mule Vans, it supplies all them now. Uh, I think predominantly it's Sprinters at the minute because that seems to be his main market but you never know, there might be some adaptation for whatever vehicle that you're wanting it on. Um, for me, the windscreen lights, they're not for straightforward, they're for slightly out on an angle, so that's going to hit, you know, the uh, tree lines as you're going down lanes, rather than the main spots that are going to go straight forward. By doing that, it gives me the option of having a much wider spread uh, of what I'm going at. So with the spotlights, you get them as like their own independent kit, so they don't expect you to buy the switch panel. So what they do include, which is a nice touch, is a relay wiring harness, and all you do, you'll fit the relay near the, uh, the battery. Uh, you've got a nice big positive and negative to go to the battery terminals uh, which is fused then down at the other end of this very generous cable you've got your two spotlight plugs so you plug into either of your spotlights can't mess that up and then as you can see here they've given you a switch cable so yeah that can go on your dashboard somewhere what we're going to do, rather than having the switch cable go to the dashboard, um, there's multiple options. Some people will wire this direct to their um, flashers on their high beams. So when they flick the high beams, it flicks on. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to wire that one back to our switch panel. So then that goes under the seat, into the switch panel, and we can control it from the little switch above, which it keeps everything together, it keeps everything fresh, doesn't it? But like I say, if you don't want to buy the panel, self-contained kit so 
So what we need to do is, this is the grommet, I don't know if you can see, just here on the sprinter. So we're going to get the cables for all four of these lights through this grommet. Unfortunately, this means removing the glove box to try and get up to where the grommet is. Then we're going to go, we're going to put both the relays in where the battery is, uh, which gives them the power. We're then going to put all four cables that come with the pre-done plugs to the spots, that's them wired. Uh, and then all we need to do is the switch cable. Like I say, these are already pre-done, however, we're going to run them off the Oxbeam fuse box just to make a much smarter, neater, old and undusted thing. What I could probably do, looking at the ampage rating, these go straight from the fuse board to the actual um, spotlights themselves with the correct size wiring and the correct plug on the end of it, which takes a lot less cable out of it. However, these things come as a kit and I like to kind of keep kits together. So if anything fails, anything breaks, I go underwater, submerge it, break it, that kind of thing. I know I can just replace the kit, if that makes sense. So I've done, I've had to set the um, pipe off for the snorkel to get a little bit more access, pop the tie wrap off that holds the, the end of the grommet um, and somehow managed to find a little bit of cable that wasn't used anymore tiny twin cable on which is a bit stronger a bit thicker i've pulled that through as a fish wire um, this is an absolute shit you might want someone with small hands um, and basically pulled that through now so what we're going to try and do try and do is connect on the um, plugged ends we're going to stagger them so there's only one has to go through at any one time uh, and get all four of those through i'm also going to leave a twin cable through there um, from uh, probably round where the battery is, which is purely for running lights uh, or DRLs. Uh, that's a future thing, but while I'm in here, while I've got the glove box off, future proof it, jobs are good. And rice are dead easy. Um, as you've seen, got all the spotlights through, plugged them in, doddle. Got the cables through the dashboard and wired them direct to the battery through their own little relay box, which leaves us with. these connectors normally like i say this is what you put on your dashboard and um, click it on nice little red light jobs are good or you can put your own switches on whatever i've run them through here through the fuse board into the seat box and at the minute i've got them just up here so i can film it's a nice little bit with um, the dark footage what i'm gonna do as you've seen got the fuse board here we'll wire them into this next and then that means they're on this switch panel So I'm currently getting a suntan off my van. Have a look at these. Off. Sides. Side. Main. Off. Side. These are insane. I'm going to have to put the drone up. It's somewhere else. Off. So bear in mind, I have just blown a headlight bulb. So it's not the fairest of tests. However, sides, main, the distance on that, that is around half a mile to there. I'm going to show you a full mile in a second. Yeah. Just the sides. Off. Just the sides. Off. Main. Both. Off. So there we go. Nice, nice, easy install. And the beauty of this now is, although I've only got my front spots wired up to it, any accessory or any further lights that I wire on, i.e. the side lights, the rear lights, something like that, all I've got to do now is run the pods and the neg back to under the seat and wire it directly in and the switches are already done. The other thing at the minute that I've done with the app is because I've got the windshield light, which is the little pods, and I've got the grill lights, which is the big ones, I've actually linked them together. So when I press one or the other, they both come on. So you can see there, both lights come on. 
and what that has allowed you to do is just group things which i think is also a nice little touch so i'm going to pretty much end this one here um the links and everything will be below because i know someone's going to ask where i got it from how i did it this that and the other they'll be there uh, what I'm going to crack on with now that will be in a later video is I'm going to fit exactly the same fuse board again but in the boot of the vehicle um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the little trailing lead to the edge of the cabinets that are now fitted then what I can do is everything that I've already run i.e. the little spotlights in the ceiling then I've got the uh, RGB lights that go around the pop-up I've got the fridge, I've got the diesel heater, all those things that are coming down in a big bunch of cables now, I can wire them into the individual um, pos and negs off of the relays of the box, and then, yeah, happy days. It's a very easy install then, isn't it? Uh, and I know it's not the cheapest option, but like I said before, you don't need the Bluetooth one. It's a nice, it's a nice thing to have, but like the Landy, it hasn't got it and it's worked fine for years. Um, it's not the cheapest there are the cheap chinese switch panels but again you end up with masses of wiring in a big clump behind your switch panel and then dodgy little fuses and um, they're all right if you only want to spend 15 20 quid but when you want that nice flush little control unit with a big fuse board hidden away out of the way that you can work on i haven't found anything better than this and as far as price goes i think it's around half to a third of the prices of the other systems that i was looking at for more um the race cars type big big global expedition vehicles so thank you very much for that absolutely disorganized rabble um hopefully you can see how bright these lights are now um which are absolutely insane um and how good this little switch unit is and it's a little bit of a guide on if you're building something is it an option for you so thank you very much stay safe